Okay, so how is everyone today? Good, I hope. All right, so there's an exam on uh, Friday, which is to say seven days and uh, seven days and uh, nine hours from now. Okay, and it's uh, you know not in this room. Ha has has the announcement of the room been made yet? Has it been made? I can't remember. Uh, at any rate, uh, there, all of the 2414 students are taking it at the same time. So it's happening in a multitude of rooms. And uh, some of you will be in one room and some of you will be in another room. An, an announcement will be made. Uh, I strongly encourage you to find where that room is in advance. Because it would be you know, really silly if you were walking around at 7 uh, p.m. wondering <laughs> where is that room. So please don't, uh, please don't do that. Good, so today's the 21st. Uh, 18. 21st, which means either yesterday or today uh, was the, uh, the equinox, which means that the number of uh, seconds of daylight was the sa same-ish as the number of seconds of uh, nighttime. And we're going to keep decreasing it uh, to the solstice. Yeah. So last time when we left, we were talking about, uh, we were talk talking about arc length. And uh, here's the idea. The whole idea is that uh, <clears throat> you've got some function on, uh, on, on interval A to B. And it, uh, you know, does some nice stuff here. And the question is, is that uh, if, if, this were, if this were bendable but not stretchable, and I could grab it uh, at both ends and then pull it tight and then measure how long is that, that's, that's called the arc length. Arc length. And uh, the, way, the way that, uh, that uh, this is viewed is that uh, we'll, we'll take this, take exactly this uh, this thing and then we'll say okay uh, I'm gonna cut it into uh, into pieces so just for sake of illustration I'll use four pieces and uh, instead of trying to trace the curviness we'll say well I'm just gonna go I'm gonna say that this piece is that line segment and then this piece is this line segment and this piece is that line segment, and this piece is that line segment. And uh, the virtue of doing that is that uh, using the Pythagorean uh, formula, we can find the length of each one of those green line segments, and then use that as, a, as an estimate for the arc length in each piece. So this would be making an estimate for the arc length of the curve using four line segments. And uh, you, know, you can see that uh, this is going to be an underestimate, because the red curve is bendy, right? So between those two points, the green one is going straight, it's flat, uh, but the red one is bendy. So as a result, the arc length of the red one is going to be longer, uh, and, or at least certainly not any shorter than the green. So this is an estimate, and in particular, it's an underestimate. Uh, how could we make a better estimate? Divide it right. So instead of using four pieces, why not uh, you know, four million pieces? Okay, so for whatever engineering problem you're, you find yourself working on, there's going to be some number of pieces, which is, which is enough pieces. Okay, calculus, the calculus idea is that uh, let's just not stop. Let's just, what, what would happen if we cut it into infinitely many infinitesimal pieces? And then we found the length of each and every, in, uh, of each and every infinitesimal piece, and then sum them all up. Well, that's an integral. So, you know, this is, this is four pieces. And then in, uh, when, you, when you do that, you know, we came up with a nice formula involving square roots and uh, the mean value theorem and all that. Then we said, uh, now we're going to let, uh, more or less, we're going to let the number of pieces in. Go to infinity. And uh, when you do that, when you do that, you can, you can 
to see exactly what was meant by that, you can look at the previous lecture, you come to this formula. Uh, the integral a to b square root 1 plus uh, derivative, if this is function f of x like that, then this would be f prime at x square that dx like so. So in the end, in the, end the reason why that, uh, why that shows up, why that radical shows up is because uh, at the bottom uh, we're kind of uh, using the Pythagorean formula. So that, I know that that says 1, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change it just slightly and say 1 squared. <laughs> okay, that's, that's the same, right? But what I want you to see is that uh, we've got the sum of squares in a radical. Okay, so then now, that's a, that's a very nice formula, but from the, for the, from the purpose, from the point of view of trying to give you an exercise to do, uh, it turns out that uh, trying to give you an exercise where you can uh, calculate the answer with the fundamental theorem of calculus is, uh, is, uh, is a, a tricky proposition because anytime you have a, an antiderivative that uh, basically is just one big radical, <laughs> the only way it can ever work with the fundamental theorem of calculus that, that you could find an antiderivative if, it, if it's more or less like a contrived problem. So somehow, in, in every case, we're going to have to get this 1 squared plus derivative of f all squared to basically like we're going to have to collapse these two squares to a single square so that uh, we can compute <laughs> square root and it can come out. So, so this formula is beautiful. You should know it. You should know why it works. And now we're going to do an exercise and I'm going to show you just how contrived, <laughs> how contrived the exercises must be so that you can calculate. So an example would be something like this. I could say uh, let, I could say consider well, I could say it like this. Find the arc length of, how about, uh, I don't know, W is equal to uh, sine of 4 theta on, uh, how about, zero less or equal uh, theta less or equal two pi. Okay, now, strictly speaking, it's not part of the, uh, it's not part of the exercise uh, for, me, for me to ask you to sketch it, but I want to make sure that, uh, that uh, you understand. So if we were to plot this, then, uh, you know, this would be the theta axis and this the w axis. And uh, if, if we were to plot, instead of uh, sine of 4 theta, if we were to plot just sine of regular old theta, just 1 theta, then, you know, we'd have a sine wave. So does sine, where does sine start? Zero. At 0, right? And then it goes up. So it would kind of do this. Uh, so that would be uh, one full cycle, right? So that'd be zero to two pi. Uh, then, you know, if we if we plot what was actually given, Then, uh, so what I'm saying is that uh, if we now plot, this is uh, theta and this is w is sine of 4 theta, then the, this plot will be similar to, similar to, but different than that one. So it'll be similar uh, in the sense that uh, it's going to start at the same place and also it's going to end at the same place. But uh, what is the effect of the, of the 4 there? Not the amplitude. The frequency would be much higher, so it would do the same operation four times. Right. So what's happening is that uh, you can kind of view it as uh, this. We're feeding it the angle theta, and uh, it goes through one cycle over a course of two pi. But uh, now we're feeding it four theta. So it's so it's like we're we're traversing through the angles four times as fast. 
So yes, I like the way he said it. What will happen is that essentially we'll have this, but uh, in fact replicated four times. So I'll cut this into four pieces. So what will happen is that uh, it's like I'm going to take this and squish it, whoop, and I have to fit one in each one of those. So it's going to go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. You know, if I was a perfect artist. <laughs> okay, so what I'm saying is like it's this one, I make four, I, I squish it, and then I copy it four times and copy it there, 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 there. All right, so the question is, is we want to find uh, the arc length of that. Uh, all right, <clears throat> in the end, this is a formula you must memorize. So uh, the formula is stated in terms of x's, but this question is, is stated in, in a different way. So writing it, um, writing this formula, but in terms of these symbols, it would look like uh, you know, in, uh, integral, what are a and b? Zero and, two pi. Zero and two pi. And then we're going to want a square root of, I'll say, one squared, and then uh, plus, uh, well, I'm going to write like this. I'm going to say dw d theta squared like that. And then uh, what are we differentiating, uh, what are we integrating against? What do I write here? d theta. Okay, so this is the formula in terms of these new symbols. So what is, uh, what is dw d theta, by the way? Well, what's the derivative of sine? Cosine. cosine. And then if this were exactly theta, that, that then we'd be finished. So it's multiply by 4, right? Multiply by, by 4. So d w d theta, that's d d theta, sine 4 theta, like that. So this would be cosine 4 theta. And then for the chain rule, you have to multiply by the derivative of 4 theta, right? And then what's the derivative of 4 theta? It's 4. So this would be cosine of 4 theta. Multiply, multiply by 4. And before you ask, is it uh, permitted that you should write the 4 in the front? Well, is it? Can you? Yeah. Of course you can. Multiplication commutes. But uh, that, being this, that being said, those of you who are going to go on and take uh, later math classes, it will be the case that uh, you'll still have things that are more or less the chain rule, and uh, it will be necessary to write that stuff on the right-hand side, not the left, because you'll come to a place where the, the, the analog to multiplication no longer commutes. Yes? For this, well, what's ha well? If you look at the notes, uh, if you look at the notes on this part, on this part, uh, you know, I made a sum, a summation, with sigma notation, and then I said, be because there were n pieces, and n might be four, it might be four million. So what what we said is that uh, now, if we let the number of pieces become infinite, and there's a couple other technical t considerations, the number of pieces has to become infinite, and in fact, each piece has to become infinitely small. Uh, we do that, and then this is the result. So there's no n in this formula. Okay, so plugging this stuff in, <clears throat> now we have an uh, integral 0 to 2 pi, square root, 1 squared, plus cosine 4 theta times 4, all that squared, d theta. All right, so now uh, you can see that, well, I'll distribute the square across the product so that we have, uh, so that we have 4 squared uh, times cosine squared, so like this. Now, if that 4 squared weren't there, if that 4 squared weren't there, then what? Could do, uh, 
Right. We we could convert it to sine squared, right? Using the no wait, is that right? No, that's not right, is it? Haha. <laughs> Let's think about this. Then how would we have to do it? I was expecting this to be the Pythagorean one. Uh, now I'm caught off guard. Uh, just a second. <laughs> okay, so. So we, <laughs> all right, this is terrible. So let's uh, write this down. Well, it, it just, uh, it comes to my point, I guess. So the first thing that I said is that uh, because we have this big radical here, so I'm just copying down that, that thing up there. Because uh, this, this integral has uh, that square root in it and everything's in the square root, uh, it makes it uh, quite difficult to uh, come up with a problem that works. So like this and then d theta. So when I, for, when I was just thinking about it in my head for a second, I thought, oh, this will definitely work because I can use the Pythagorean identity, I, w I was thinking. But in fact, that won't work uh, because it would, have to be, it would have to look like 1 minus, right? It would have to look like 1 minus. So if we, <laughs> if we wanted to do this now, this would never appear on, exam on an exam, but if we wanted to do this now, how would we have to do it? Can you see what would be necessary? The doublet, so I, it sounds like you're saying maybe we can reduce the, do, do that. Uh, and that won't get us anywhere, in fact. It won't, it won't get us anywhere because in the end, all that stuff is still in the radical. We've got to get it out. We've got to get it out. I'm sorry? What do you mean? So the reason why this would never the reason why this would never appear on an exam is that uh, to do this uh, notice that uh, you know like in that form or this form you can say that this is a square plus another square so if you have a, a square plus another square in a radical then we went over a technique of what you're supposed to do with that what are you supposed to do you do a trigonometric substitution so that would mean that uh, to do this we'd need to do a trigonometric substitution in an exercise that already has trigonometry in it. <laughs> So that's a, that's a train wreck uh, of a problem. Uh, so you know we might give something like this on a homework exercise, but not on a, but not on an exam. So to proceed, you'd have to do this. You'd have to do a trigonometric substitution. Uh, we'd have to do a trigonometric substitution, and we'd say that uh, four cosine of four theta is going to be equal to. Uh, tangent, tangent, yes, tangent of a new angle. We can't use theta again, so I'll use phi. <laughs> so you'd have to do that, and it would just be a train wreck. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm just gonna end it there, th this exercise, because we're gonna, it's too far of a rabbit hole. But uh, do you see how we got the integral set up anyway? So some of the questions that we're going to ask you are going to be just like that. They're just going to say, set up, but do not evaluate the integral. Yeah, I mean, I don't know on the exam. I don't know about that. But generally speaking, uh, a, a very common question is, for this situation, set up, but do not evaluate the arc length integral. And the reason, the reason is, be, is basically because we, want to, we just want to see if you can set it up, but uh, actually evaluating it is a nightmare. <laughs> OK, so let's have one that actually will work. Okay, so an example of one that will definitely work. I'll, tr I'll, not, I'll not make one up and hope. Uh, yeah. Okay, so then we'll do, uh, we'll do this one. So I can say, uh, find the arc length of uh, about uh, z is equal to, what do we use? Theta? So we'll use t now. So t squared minus uh, an eighth 
logarithm t, uh, and we'll do it uh, on uh, on one less or equal t less or equal three. So find the arc length. Okay, so then see if you can write down the formula for it in terms of uh, the symbols uh, Z and T. So I'll give you just a moment to do that. Okay, so the formula is going to be, uh, so integral with bounds 1 to 3, big square root here, 1, and I'll write squared, and then plus, uh, so what, uh, in terms of z and t, what do I need to write in there? dz dt, and then what out here? dt. All right. So, uh, fine. To do that, let's calculate dz dt. <coughs> well, that'd be 2t, and then minus an eighth, uh, 1 over t, like so. Like that. Right. Uh, dt over dt <laughs> for the chain rule, yeah. Okay, so then, uh, <coughs> so now we're going to want to square that and add 1. Okay. So uh, if we do 1 squared plus dz dt squared, like that, that would be 1 squared. And then plus, uh, you know, I'll use a foil or whatever. Plus, so that thing squared, so that would be 4t squared. Okay, then now that one times that one. So then uh, subtract. Now notice that uh, when you do that one times that one, the t's cancel. And they definitely cancel because uh, we're never near t is equal to zero. That would be the problem. Okay, but uh, we're only near, we're only t's between one and three, so it's permitted that we should cancel. The t's will cancel, and then we get two uh, multiplied by negative an eighth. So what's that? Negative one fourth. So minus, uh, minus a fourth. That's the one, and then uh, we do it the other way and get another minus a fourth. So that's like F, O, I, and then what's L? <coughs> that one times that one, right? So that'd be plus, because the negatives cancel, and then a 64th, uh, one over T squared. Okay, so that's F, O, I, L. F O I L. So now simplifying this, this would be what? One, and then uh, that's uh, minus a fourth, minus a fourth, so that's a half right there. So that'd be minus a half, like that. And then 4t squared, and then that'd be plus 1 over 64 times 1 over t squared. So that's a 1 minus a half. So that's a half. So then now I'm going to write it like this, and here's where I'm about to pull the rabbit out of the hat. So this is 4t squared plus a half plus a 64th times 1 over t squared. Now what I want you to observe, what I want you to observe is that this thing, all this work right here, besides calculating that derivative. All this work is just an algebraic thing, and that's what's in that radical. So this is integral 1 to 3, square root of that crazy business. Uh, whoops. Square root of 4t squared
plus a half, plus a 64th, 1 over t squared, dt. And now here's the deal. We cannot proceed. We can't actually calculate this unless, unless, all that stuff in the, under the radical happens to be something squared. Because we've just got to get that stuff out of the radical. If it's not something squared, then we can't, <laughs> we can't do anything. So sort of, you know, just by way of like uh, hope and rainbows, I guess, uh, let's just hope uh, that it, uh, it could somehow be something that goes like this. You know, so this is, you know, hope and rainbows here. <laughs> Does, is it actually something squared? What, well, what could I put in there? Well, it, for this to work, if this really is something squared, because of that, what would I have to write right here? 2t. 2t, right? I'd have to put a 2t here because of that one. And now, if, if it really is something squared, I'd have to do something because of that. What? Not, one, one over 8. How about 1 over 8t? Yeah. Okay. Okay, if it was just that one, right? <laughs> and then now, because of, because of that's a plus, what do I need to write here? Plus. plus? Is it beyond hope to hope that that should work? Does that work? Does it? Foil it out. F? L? No, we didn't. We foiled that one. <laughs> it was minus. It was minus. Now it's plus. Ah, ha, ha, what a good joke, right? All these problems are completely contrived. So basically, the problem is designed so that uh, you go from this, you square that, add one, <laughs> and then you have that. Ha, <laughs> ha. So that's what I mean, is they're completely contrived. They're, they're made to work this way. Uh, fine. So then to that end, we have square root of a square there. So this would be equal to integral 1 to 3. You uh, square that and then compute square root. So then you'd have absolute value. So 2t plus an eighth. I'll write it as 1 over 8 multiplied by 1 over t. So the square root and the square cancel. Now consider the domain, 1 to 3 t's are between 1 and 3. So how about this thing inside of the absolute value? Because t is always between 1 and 3, what, then that, that thing in there is always positive. As a result, now we can drop the absolute value. So 2t plus an eighth times 1 over t dt. So I won't even, uh, I'll leave it to you to finish it from here. Okay, because this is something you could have done, uh, in fact, even before this class, I think. Okay? Any question about this one? But this thing right here, this, uh, this joke, I guess, it's not really a joke. I don't know, I don't know what to call it, but uh, uh, this uh, contrivance, its whole purpose is that, uh, is that you can't use this formula. You can't use the fundamental theorem of calculus. You cannot calculate an antiderivative unless you can smuggle all that stuff out of the square root. So, you know, one way to smuggle it out, the cheapest and easiest way, is if it turns out to already be a square, like this exercise. Another way, another way, is if you're going to do a trigonometric substitution. But that's kind of a big, that's kind of a big exercise, right? That, that means that we'd be having you doing an arc length problem, and in, in, in doing that arc length problem, you'd also do a trigonometric substitution problem. Now, that's conceivable, but that's kind of a big exercise. So that, uh, you know, it's usually more along these lines. Any question about it? So when you're doing these, I encourage you to look at uh, the variety of examples you can find in the textbook. But in the end, always look for some cute way that, uh, oh, yeah, it turns out that this is actually a square. Ha uh ha. -huh. Now we're in section 8.2. So. Uh, this is called surface area. So what we did 
in the in the previous section is we said, uh, oh look, if you were a little creature standing right there, and because this function is differentiable, if you zoomed in close enough, the world would look flat to you, right? That's the that's the that's the calculus point of view, uh, and it would be this is a one-dimensional world. And uh, so what we did is we found the one-dimensional measure of this world, its arc length. How big is this world? It's arc length. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, we're going to take one of these. We're going to take one of these, and uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna rotate it around an axis. So we're going to take exactly this, uh, this thing. one of these, and now we're going to rotate it around the axis that way. So it's, you know, coming in and out of the page like that. So performing that rotation, the shape now looks like this. So drawing these requires just a little bit of a trick. So what you do is you make uh, these two fence posts, and you make them uh, symmetric across the axis. So a as, as far up as you go, you have to go that far down. Okay, then you just copy that curve to the other one. Okay, now to make it look right, now down here, you know, just use your eyes and say, well, I need to go that far down. So like right there, so it's symmetric. And then for that one, similar, symmetric. And then, you know, for my, uh, for my purposes, what I usually do is I turn it so that I'm looking at it like this. And now I need to, you know, reflect that drawing. So I have to go uh, out and then in a little bit and then out. Okay, and we're, this is not an art class, okay? It's not, uh, it's not an art class. What's happening here is that, uh, let's consider, for example, this point right here, just this one point. If we, uh, if we rotate that around this axis like that, what, what will that one green point trace out? A circle, right? So that one green point right there will do something like this. You'd see it on that side and then it'd be behind back there, right? Similarly, you know, so this is like, you know, like a fancy vase or, or a pot or something, you know, turned on its side. Can you see it? So now, uh, this is a thing, you know, you could like, you could like pick it up and then set it down on the table. Okay, and then uh, you could paint it Right? That'd be something you could paint. And the question we're going to address is how much paint would it take? You could walk around on this surface, and uh, locally the surface would look flat to you, flat like a sheet of paper, in the same kind of way that uh, when you're walking around on, uh, in Kansas, it looks, the world looks flat. Uh, so what we want to know is how much surface area does this, does this shape constitute? So does everybody understand the problem? So uh, that's the problem we want to address. The way it is addressed is cute. So uh, in the first place, we could take something like a cylinder. Cylinder. If we take a cylinder, and uh, we say that we have the two measurements that you usually have, so the radius and the height, the radius and the height, then uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to surgery this cylinder, not including the, the top and the bottom. So this is just the, the vertical bit of it. I'm going to surgery it. I'm going to cut it right there on that point. So I'm going to cut it. And then uh, cutting it, I can roll it out flat. Right? So I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to make, so that's dashed. I'm going to make this green right here. So cutting it right there and rolling it out flat, 
uh, what you would observe is you'd see this. This would uh, look like that. You'd see that dashed line and that dashed line there. Okay, so, so can you see it? Now, the, this is a rectangle. So what's its uh, height? H, right, is the same as the height of the cylinder. The slightly tricky question is that uh, what is this width? Is the circumference of that circle, right? That circle is known to have radius r, so what's the circumference in terms of radius? 2 pi r, right? So this would be, this would be 2 pi r. So now we can find the area of that. Right? You, because it, well, because it's a rectangle, right? So the area of this is, uh, well, base times height. So it would be 2 pi r h. OK? Now, that's, uh, that's neat. But uh, that's not, in fact, that's not the one that we need. We need one that's uh, slightly more complicated. But uh, I always like to give this one first, because if I give, if I give the one I'm about to do first, it's uh, kind of too much of a bite. So if you take a, if you take a cylinder, and then uh, you, you, you take the top and you squeeze it to a point, uh, then the result is a cone, right? So suppose that we have such a cone, and uh, we know its radius. But uh, in addition to that, in addition to that, we know this, this, uh, this, not the height. So that's one of the, you know, when you're talking about cylinders, that's a common thing, uh, frequent, frequently referred to, uh, you know, uh, h. But uh, not that. What I'm talking about is this measurement right here, the one that uh, goes exactly that that long. That's called the slant height. Suppose that that is a uh, L. Okay, so we've got a cone uh, that has radius r and slant height L. So now what we want to do is uh, is I'm going to just like I surgery the 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 cylinder. Okay, I'm going to surgery the uh, the cone. So I'm going to cut it along one of those slant heights. So right there. Okay, so right there, and now here's uh, where you have to, you know, use your imagination. I hope that you have the experience that, uh, you know, the ice cream person, okay, you know, you know, all the bells, and then, you know, mama, give me a quarter, you know, all that, and you go out there, and they give you one of those, uh, you know, ice creams that are, you know, in retrospect, not that great, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, and they're in a paper cup, in a cone. Now, what if you cut that cone, and then you lay it flat? What will you have? It won't be. A, it, it, well, it could conceive if if it was just if it was shaped just right, it could conceivably be half a circle. But uh, so this right here, if I color this green, so coloring that that green, so I cut, lay it out flat, and the question is, is what will you see? So what you'll see is that uh, here's the point of the cone. So that's the pointy bit. And then we'll have, then we'll have, there's the red dashed bit on the one side. And then we also have the red dashed bit on the other side. So that's, it's in, it's in two places because, uh, you know, because it's cut. And then this green, okay, goes around like this. And in fact, that's exactly, if we were to continue the drawing, that's exactly a sector of a circle. What I mean to say is that, uh, if you go to the ice cream person and get a cone and then cut it like that and lay it out flat, it'll be a sector of a circle. Interesting. Uh, so if the cone is just right, I think you might be able to you might be able to get it to go all the way around, but I'm not, I'm not sure. That might not be a cone. 
I don't know, I have to think about it. At any rate, let's, uh, let's measure. So how long is the green? 2 pi r. 2 pi r. So that means that uh, this, this arc length right there is 2 pi r. Two times pi times r. Now, don't be confused. That's not r. What is that? L. That's l. Okay. That r has to do when you wind it up into a cone. All right. So that's uh, that's l. And that's two pi r. And now the question is, is that uh, then what's theta? if we call this theta right here. Now here's where you gotta, you gotta remember. Sine of L nah. R. Come now. Why, uh, you know, why radians? You know, like, uh, you know, most of the time when you're learning about degrees, when you learn about angles, you know, you learn about degrees. And then one of the things that uh, your calculus instructors have to fight is, is to say, stop touching those degrees, <laughs> right? You know, like, stop that. Degrees are, degrees are nonsense. Okay, we use radians. This is a math class. Okay, why radians? What is a radian? What is one? Well, let's look. What if we draw a circle? So we've got a circle. Okay, it's got a radius. Now, suppose that uh, suppose that I follow the arc a little bit. Say like that far. Can y'all see that? If I follow the arc that much. Is that red that I drew there, does that have the same length as the radius? No, it doesn't, right? It's too short, seems to me. And if I was to follow it like all the way to right, to right there, so that the red goes all the way around, would, would, that be, uh, would, that be, would I have more red or more green or what? There'd be more red. So that, uh, that, that'd be too much red, right? So this is not enough red. So, so that... So that angle right there is less than a radian, less than one radian. And then if I follow the arc, say like this far, So if I follow it that far, and I'm talking about this angle right there, then I have more red than green, right? So, so this, is, this is more than a radian. You have exactly one radian when you follow the arc around, and the red that you have is the same as the radius. This, it, uh, you know, I'm just eyeballing it. It's about right there. That's where the red has the same length as the green. That's one radian. So this is, uh, this is uh, less than a radian. More than one radian. And this is one radian. So now the question is, is, well, what if I wanted to go all the way to, what if I wanted to flip all the way around to that point? How many, uh, how many radians would I have to go? Well, if I go another radian, that'd be about right there, right? And if I go another radian, that'd be about right there. That's almost, that, that doesn't quite get me all the way there. So I have to go, I have to go three radians and then a little bit more. Pi radians. Oh, I have to go pi radians? Ha, <laughs> <laughs> incredible. That's how many radians uh, it takes. So one, to go, to make a half turn, it's pi radians. To make a full turn, is two pi radians. That's what a radian is. Yes? 
No, it's not pi over 4. <laughs> yes? I guess so for, for one radian, it would have to be between pi over 4 and pi over 3. Uh, yeah, that might be true. Yeah, I think so. It's not a specific angle. It's not, a spe it's not like a named... It does exist, but it's not like one of the common ones. It, so yeah, one radian, so like pi over three, that's about one, it's more than one. Okay, so then, uh, so, so that means that uh, a radian is gonna be uh, slightly less than pi over three, just, just less, one radian. Now the reason why this is important is because, is because, well, uh, suppose we want the area Suppose we want the area of, say, this. Say, like, uh, this sector right here. This piece of the circle. So that angle is more than a radian, right? And the question is, how much area how much area is just in that slice of, of, of the pizza? How much area is in there? Well, if this is R, if this is R, how much area is in the whole pizza? Pi R squared. So the, the area of the whole thing going all the way around is, uh, is pi multiplied by r squared. So the question is, is that, uh, well, what, what is a full turn in terms of radians? <coughs> 2 pi, right? But what if we only go theta? What if that's as far as we go? Well, it's just a, it's just a, a multiplicative factor of how far that we go, right? So if I said cut the pizza in half, you know, I think that, I think that you'd be okay with saying, Phew. Right, just cutting it in half. What if I said I want 75% of the pizza? Well, then you'd come down to here, right? So the answer of the, the, for the area of the sector, sect, sector, uh, the area of the sector is going to be uh, A is, well, if it was the whole circle, if it was the whole circle, it'd be pi r squared, right? Uh, but we only want uh, the amount of area that uh, represents how far around the circle we went. So what fraction did we go around? Huh? Well, it'd be theta over 2 pi, right? That's how far we went around. So that's the area of a sector. Okay? This is the reason why radians are important and the reason why you should stop talking about degrees. That's nonsense. Okay. Now, back to the question at hand. Uh, we wanted to know, in the end, right here we said that the surface area of a cylinder can be found thus, by, uh, by, uh, by surgerying, surgerying it into a rectangle. And uh, what we need is the area of a cone. We need the area of this cone. Right? We need this one. Okay. So, furthermore, furthermore, uh, concerning this, if this is, uh, you know, what is this, what is this uh, measure right here? So my, my question is that uh, if this is r and that's theta, then what is this measure right here? How long, what is the arc length there? What is that? Well, so, so the area of the hole, so the arc length of the hole, arc length of the hole, there you go. The arc length of the hole would be uh, what? Uh, 2 pi r. So 2 pi r. So the area of just the arc just that, uh, just that arc would be how much? So if, the, if, the, if we go all the way around the angle is 2 pi. If we just go theta It'd just be theta r. If you go all the way around, if you just go theta. 
Of course, this formula only works when you're measuring in radians. It doesn't, measure, it doesn't work when you're measuring in degrees. OK, so we need the area of this. Okay, we need that, uh, that area. So what is it? So back to the cone. We had a cone. We had said that we know its radius is r. We know that its slant height is l. We surgery it into that. You've got to be a little bit careful because uh, the radius of this unfolded cone is the slant height. Oop, I wrote R. The radius of the of this cone is uh, is L. Okay, and then uh, you know this also is going to be is going to be L. Okay. Now, what is the arc length? Two pi r. So this is 2 pi r. And then, now, what's theta? What's that angle? The angle will be in radians. Will be what? So the whole point, the whole point of this is uh, is this uh, relationship here. So if we name this S, we name that S, that measure right there, then what's S? It's this, right? The arc length is the radius times the angular measure in radians. So if you wanted to do it like that, you could say that uh, comparing 2 pi r, 2 pi r is theta multiplied by what? L, right? Remember, we're looking at a circle that, uh, we're looking at a sector that is the result of cutting this cone with slant height L. Oh, we're, we're basically out of time. So uh, now solving for theta, we can get what? Two pi r divided by L. Right, so we can get 2 pi uh, r over L. So now what I want you to do uh, over the weekend so that we can come back and knock this out of the park, okay, I need you to tell me, I need you to figure out what is the area of that sector. So find that area. And it needs to be in terms of the, of uh, the, the stuff that you know. Okay, radius and slant height and all that stuff. Good. Have a nice weekend.